Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Olive Board. My name is Dinkar, and I welcome you all in this session. I hope everybody is doing great, feeling healthy and fine. Welcome to the RBI Grade B 2022 Fast Track Revision Series for Phase One General Awareness Exam. I hope yesterday you have enjoyed the lecture and you have uh, also noted down some of the basic uh, necessities that you require to have during the Phase One examination for General Awareness portion and. Uh, important topics we have yesterday declared and today i uh, i will be starting with the economic survey so economic survey has been divided into two parts uh, like uh, part one and part two so we have to discuss both the things so important things are there over there so uh, we have a lot of content to discuss but uh, i have shorted down to a very uh, lowest one so some important things i will be just telling you but i will be going on in a very fast mode so you better be uh, if you wanted to note it down you can note it down or you want just wanted to see you can just see okay because if i go in a very slow mode and all those things it will take a lot of time so i will be uh, it will be a really fast track revision so please be like i hope you have already read all the uh, uh, economic survey things and uh, what are there what are the target uh, what are documents and what are the various type of uh, like chapters are there in the economic survey so you have already been gone through all these economic survey things we are just making you to brush up the things like what exactly you just need have to remember over there okay so uh, before starting the session uh, i just wanted to see how many people are there hello sure welcome to the session good evening very good evening to you anybody else who is there uh, they can also say hi hello so that i can know and i can just address you by your names if anybody is there they can just let me know by their names okay so we will be just starting with our session okay so we are pledging for your success this is a fast track crisp uh, crisp, uh, crisp series basic concept understanding and we are providing gui uh, guidance over here and these are general awareness and today we are focusing on economic survey hello afs welcome to the session good to see you man okay so economic survey uh, is prepared by De uh, department of economic affairs under ministry of finance okay it is just prepared before the budget and it is normally prepared by the chief economic advisor okay and this is presented in both uh, both is how both houses of the parliament in the first economic survey came in 1950 and 51 and uh, from 1964 it is practiced to release one day before the budget okay uh, hello bhuvnesh welcome to the session Oh my God! Oh my God! Thank you, thank you, Bhuvnesh. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bhuvnesh. So motivational words. I hope you enjoy the session. Okay, so this time some of the unique features are there. So it is a two-volume format uh, uh, of the recent year to a single volume plus a separate volume for statistical table. So along with a sectoral table, a new chapter has been added, like a use of satellite, because this is a chapter number eleven. Chapter eleven in the economic survey, which says that this is a new chapter where where we are telling that we are utilizing the satellite geospatial images to look like how the various projects are working. Okay, now traditionally normally it is prepared by uh, uh, chief economic advisor, but this year it has been prepared by principal economic advisor because. the chief economic advisor position has been uh, vacant since december so that is why it has this has to be prepared by the principal economic advisor so ga the government has appointed v ananta nageshwaran as a next chief economic advisor just 3 days before the budget okay so what is the central theme of the 2021 2022 economic survey we are following here is a agile approach okay so this is very important remember this okay so there is a growth estimate indian economy is expected to witness a gdp growth of 9.2% okay and indian economy is in good position with a gdp growth rate of 8.8 to 8.5% in real terms of 2023 so this uh, figure is very important for your examination just remember the figures okay so agriculture in the allied sector uh, they have uh, seen a growth of 3.9% very important okay and advanced uh, advanced estimate of gross value addition to the industries have will be rising to 11.8% total consumption has grown by 7% and the food grain production of the kharif season has been a record level of 150 million tons for the kharif season only we are not talking about rabi season okay for only for the kharif season it is 150.5 million tons okay so all these things uh, whenever the examiner is preparing a question paper the examiner take out the things from here only because these are the only important data uh, data that uh, they are going to ask okay hello raj kishore so the share of industries in the gross value addition is 28.2% and uh, the gross fixed capital formation is expected to grow by 
RBI has given a latest report, Industrial Outlook Survey. So Indian total export to grow by 16.5% uh, and imports are expected to grow by 29.4%. So these are been targets that has been given. Okay. So these are very important uh, numerical values. You have to know. Okay. Hello, Manisha. Hello, Shikha. Welcome to the session. Okay. Then uh, some of the important things are supply side reforms uh, like uh, deregulation of various sectors, uh, simplification of the processes, removal of legacy issue like retro, uh, retrospective taxation, production link in initiative PLI, what we call it as PLI. Okay, PLI is there. Then barbell strategy, safety nets, and agile approach. So this barbell strategy, you should just remember. Barbell strategy that combined uh, bouquet of safety nets to cushion the impact of on the vulnerable section of the society and business with a flexible policy in the based on the bison updation of the formula. So this is called barbell strategy. You should know uh, what kind of strategy that has been adopted. They will give you some four or five names. So you have to click on barbell strategy. Okay, and this is agile approach. Agile approach we have discussed in the slides one. Okay, agile framework responds by accessing the outcome in short iteration and constantly uh, constantly adjusting incrementally so agile approach means like you are uh, every day updating the uh, outcomes and based on that you are uh, adjusting the various type of inputs and all those things that is called agile approach okay so barbell strategy agile approach and some figures are very important india balance of payment uh, remains surplus okay so uh, we have a foreign exchange which is stand at us dollar 634 billion on 31st december please update you with the latest data please be uh, please make sure that you are updated by the latest data and gross non performing uh, non performing advances ratio and net non performing ratio uh, has continued to declining so there's nothing to read about it. Okay. Then capital to risk weighted as your CRAR of scheduled commercial bank has increased from 15.84% to 16.54% by September. Okay. So this is a good news like uh, capital to risk weighted asset ratio has increased. Okay. So more, more, the more, more the increase in this ratio, more uh, your cushion, like more uh, good the scheduled commercial bank will be. Okay. Okay. Now, so World Bank, if anything is related to World Bank is there, World Bank forecast Indian real GDP grow at 8.7%, they can ask you, what is the projected growth of Indian real GDP as by World Bank? So they have given as 8.7%, okay? Asian development has projected 7.5%. As per IMF, latest World Economic Outlook on 25th January, Indian real GDP projected at 9%. Everybody has given different, different percentage. So you have to remember each and every percentage that has been given by these people, okay? Now, chapter two on fiscal development. By, uh, guys, I, I just wanted to warn you that right now we are doing chapter two till chapter 10 we have to go. Okay. So please be there with me because it is going to be a little bit hectic for you also. Okay. But just enjoy the session. So the government budget for a 35.4% in the capital expenditure. So there's an increase of 34.5% 30, uh, over the budget estimate. The gross tax revenue has registered a growth of over 50%. Very important. The gross monthly GST collection have crossed rupees 1 lakh crore since July. Okay. Uh, then Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anni Yojana Phase 3 from June uh, May to June and Phase 4 June to November, July to November and Phase 5 uh, from December to March that has been announced with a food as subsidy, food subsidy that has to be given at 1.47 lakh crore. This is important figure 1.47 lakh crore. Okay. So this scheme is like uh, we are providing free food uh, over the above regular monthly national food security uh, act. Okay. So we are giving double that amount. Okay. Now. The budget fiscal deficit is revised from 3.5% to 9.5% uh, in the uh, uh, RE. The fiscal deficit uh, provincial account is stood at 9.2%. The main reason for the fiscal deficit to go uh, for this is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Budget uh, envisage a growth of 19.7 gross tax revenue, GTR. Gross tax revenue, it has been estimated that we will be getting 16.7% uh, more. Okay. 
Then the budget for 21-22 has generated a rupees 2.43 lakh crore of non-tax revenue. Please remember this 2.43 lakh crore of non-tax revenue. Okay. Then budget 20 has invested the generation of rupees 1.88 lakh crore of non-debt capital receipt. Non-debt capital receipt means either from disinvestment or selling something, you are getting some kind of money. Okay. So uh, they have got around 1.88 lakh crore, comprising 1.7 lakh crore of disinvestment. So out of 1.88 lakh crore, 1.75 is from disinvestment only okay now so the union budget the national monetization plan nmp has been developed by the niti ayog the national monetization plans estimate aggregate monetization of rupees 6 lakh crore through asset sale sale of assets on the four year period from 2022 to 2025 please remember this date like national monetization plan like we have we have to monetize our assets okay what we have to do we have to do disinvestment okay so top five sector which are there under this is that uh, roadways then railways power sector oil and gas pipelines telecom sector all these five are the major important sector under which we have to uh, do monetization okay so nearly 60% uh, of the increase in the revenue expenditure during the was due to the increase in the major subsidy so why we have so much of revenue expenditure because we are giving too much of subsidy the reason is that because of the covid 19 pandemic okay so the major subsidy has growth record of over around 200% uh, subsidy registered a growth okay so there is a increase of 200% of the subsidy the increase was driven by 400% of food subsidy only like earlier it was uh, 1.09 lakh crore now it is around 5.25 lakh crore earlier food subsidy we are only giving 1.09 lakh crore now it is 4.25 lakh crore because we have to provide free fruit grain double double fruit grain we are providing okay so then government has raised extra budgetary resources of rupees 6.04 uh, 6 lakh crore this much you should know this 5.25 lakh crore you should know and 6.04 lakh crore you should know okay so that means the uh, like around it is 2.5 percent of the gdp now uh, the central government total outstanding liabilities are rupees 117.04 lakh crore okay out of these uh, how much liability government is having public debt only is 89.9 percent okay the share of commercial bank stood at 37.77%. Now after that, uh, yeah, the scheme retail direct scheme by RBI will be instrumental in channelizing the saving of the middle class. So under this scheme, retail investor will be able to open retail direct guilds, okay, account using the online portal through which it can directly invest a minimum of 10,000 and maximum of 2 crore per security. This uh, retail direct scheme we have already discussed yesterday, right, in the FAQ's session, right? Then, gross fiscal deficit of the states. We have given a threshold of 3% to all the states, like you can have 3% uh, of the fiscal deficit, okay? And the revenue deficit of the state has also increased from 0.1% to 2% of the GDP. The net borrowing ceiling of the state was also enhanced to 5% of the GDP. GSDP because why we wanted to increase the net borrowing and why we wanted to increase the fiscal deficit revenue deficit because of the COVID-19 pandemic states are not having the resources so that is why their gross fiscal deficit are rising revenue deficit are rising so they are breaching the limit so that is why the government has extended that limit okay now chapter 3 on external sector so international monetary fund world economic outlook Okay, the projected higher growth for global trade volume in goods and services, 9.7% growth was there under that. Okay, World Trade Organization in October has released a report on the global merchandise trade volume. Growth has 10.8% in 21 and it will be followed by 4.7% rise in 2022. Okay, then merchandise exports. So we have an ambitious target, very important. This was the ambitious target that we have set. US dollar 400 billion and we have already achieved that you uh, you can see the newspaper of April month April in the month of April we have uh, crossed this limit of merchandise export US dollar 400 billion so this is a very potential question that you can get because this uh, target we have already achieved okay 
so uh, and uh, the rise in the export in the contribution of high growth in petroleum oil and lubricants the agriculture and allied products grew by 23.2% but uh, this question will not be asked uh, yeah this is the important date that you should know united state of america remained the top export destination like whatever export we are doing mostly it goes to united states okay followed by uae and china okay so three are the three are the main uh, countries through where we our uh, maximum exports goes okay then uh, belgium belgium has replaced malaysia and entered into the top 3 leading export destination with more than a billion dollar worth of pearls precious and semi precious stones and iron steel ship to the country okay earlier malaysia was there now belgium has replaced malaysia okay so you should know that belgium has replaced under which category so progress on trade agreement so we have a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement between india and australia you should know ceca is been between india and australia foreign uh, free trade agreement with european union comprehensive economic partnership agreement is with canada cepa with uae okay and uh, we have in addition india is reviewing is existing trade uh, such as ceca with singapore asean india trade and goods and agreement negotiation are complete for agreement with the uae but only you should know these things now what are the major scheme that has been uh, launched uh, in order to boost the export first is the road trip okay then developing district and export hub production link initiative around 1.9 lakh crore us dollars 26 billion has been announced in us uh, in the union budget for the production link initiative scheme for 14 key sectors okay then we have a electronic platform for preferential certificates infusion of capital in exim bank and export credit guarantee corporation of india limited okay so they gives guarantee and export promotion capital good schemes is there okay hello arti welcome to the session then what about the trade in services earlier we were doing, uh, taught, uh, telling about the trade in the merchandise now we are going to discuss about the trade in services in the services we always uh, have a good stand okay despite the pandemic uh, we have recorded a growth of 18.4% to us dollar 777.7 billion okay so this is mainly on account of the top 3 computer businesses and transportation services okay that are contributing around 80% of the total service export okay then what about the service import service import rose by 21.5% to us dollar 103.5 uh, 3 billion okay this this figure you should know about import and export okay just write it down to please okay then what about the invisibles on account of higher net services receipt and private transfer net invisible we are higher at us dollar 72.1 billion in the first half compared to us dollar 60.1 so there is an uh, increase in the invisible transfers okay what about the current account balance so uh, our current account balance has flipped into deficit of 3.1 billion dollar okay or about 0.2% of the gdp okay and uh, what about your capital account and financial account so first half of the 2022 the net capital flow more than tripled capital flow has tripled to 65.6 billion or 4.5% of the gdp then foreign investment that are coming in the form of fdi and fpi singapore is the top investing country in term of fdi equity singapore okay inflow while usa occupy the second place please note it down current account deficit was adequately cushioned by robust capital flow okay so earlier we were having the current account deficit but we have a huge capital inflow that is happening so it has already been taken care of and uh, resulting into the overall balance of payment surplus of 63.1 billion dollar okay so this led to an augmented foreign exchange reserve that has crossed 600 billion dollar and now it is touching by the end of september 635.4 billion dollar and please go with the new figure okay so this is the figure of september 2021 hello everyone okay then So at the end of November 2021, India is the fourth largest foreign exchange receiver holder after China, Japan, and Switzerland. Okay, India is the fourth largest foreign exchange receiver. Okay, so from the historical perspective, India can sustain a current account deficit of 2.5 percent or 3 percent. So if we look at the uh, history, 
if we look onto the history india can have a current account deficit of 2.5 to 3 percent of the gdp india can bear it okay now what about the exchange rate indian rupees has depreciated by 4.5 percent and india rupee has appreciated against euro japanese yen pound sterling okay it has depreciated in us dollar but it has appreciated in euros japanese yen and pound sterling one what about the external debt from like uh, what are the type of loans that we have taken from various places so india's external debt by september is estimated around 593.1 billion dollar and it has grew okay so commercial borrowing are the largest component like commercial borrowing 218.8 billion, uh, billion dollar and nri deposit is the second largest component of us dollar 1.141.6 billion where at the same level then now we come into the chapter 4 that is monetary management and financial intermediation okay so here we are just talking about the money part okay on 7th uh, january 2022 uh, as compared to uh, so reserve money that is called mo m0 recorded a growth of 13% okay and currency in circulation has grew by 70.8% so you should know that uh, uh, by uh, in january what is the exact data of currency in circulation so currency circulation has grew by 7.8% okay and year on year growth of broad money that is called m3 has stood at 9.9 percent okay so these are some of the figures now rbi measures to provide targeted liquidity support so what are the rbi uh, various uh, support that has given so a special refinancing facility of rupees 66000 crore please here the figures are very important to all india financial institution comprising 25000 crores has been given to nabard refinancing 10,000 crore has been given to National Housing Bank Th and 31,000 crore has been given to Sidvi. Okay. So these are the three places which has received the money under the refinancing uh, facility. So please note it down. Okay. Then a special long term repo operation for a small bank financial of rupees 10,000 crore to support a small business unit. Okay. So they will ask you under the S SLTRO how much. Uh, money of refinancing has been provided it is 10000 crore okay then on tap liquidity uh, window of rupees 15000 crore and extension of on tap targeted long term on tap lt tro has been extended to 31st december 21 okay then regarding the government security acquisition program so there were two program under gsep 1 and gsep 2 under G7, uh, RBI has purchased government securities of rupees 1 lakh crore and under uh, like G7 2, RBI has purchased the government security of 1.2 lakh crore. Okay, so figures are important. Then hmm, the yield on the standard. Okay, so the yield on 10 years government security has increased to standard 6.45% on 31st December. Then banking sector, the non net profit, profit after tax of public sector bank has increased to rupees 14,688 crore. Please remember this figure for public sector banks. During the first half, 2 rupees 31,144 crore during the first half of 21-2022. Okay, so there is a comparison. Okay, so it is totally getting doubled. Okay, so scheduled commercial bank, the net profit has increased from 59,000 to 78,729 crores. Deposit insurance in India, as you all know that India under the Indian deposit insurance is rupees 5 lakh per depositor per bank. And this uh, number of fully protected account around 247.8 uh, crore accounts are there at per, as per end of the March 21. And that constitute around 98.1% insurance coverage that we are given to all the accounts. Okay. And regarding the bank credit growth, the credit growth was 5.3% in April 21. And it has increased since then and now it is stood at 7.3%. Now, non-banking financial companies nbfcs uh, so they have remained sluggish uh, the total credit the total credit of nbfcs have increased marginally from uh, 27.53 lakh crore to 28.03 lakh crore so please remember all these figures for nbfc so 
normally when they are preparing the question paper so now they will go little bit deeper in preparing the question paper okay so something uh, might be getting you you might get something in the question paper regarding all this okay so the credit intensity uh, of uh, ha, as per the gdp ratio has stood at 13.7% now mutual fund the net asset under mutual under management aum has rose to 24.4% regarding insurance penetration in india insurance penetration was earlier in 2000 was what 2.71% now it has been increased to 4.2% in 2020 okay so this is figure is important okay 4.2 percent then in 2020 the penetration of life insurance in india is 3.2 percent and non-life is 1 percent okay now regarding insurance density insurance density is calculated as a ratio of premium to population how much premium people are paying and as per population okay so now the that insurance density has also increased from earlier dollar 11.5 percent in 2001 to dollar 78 so you should know this figure now what is the insurance density they will they, they it can be a direct question okay it can be a direct question okay so here during 2020 21 the gross direct premium within and outside india of non-life insurance was 2 lakh 2082 crores okay so there is a growth of 5.2% now pension sector pension sector under the new pension scheme and atal pension yojana it has increased from 374.32 lakh as on to 463 lakh on september 21 so there is a record growth of 23.7% under this pension scheme okay and what are the assets like how much money uh, that they are holding under national pension scheme and atal pension yojana standard 6.6 lakh crore this figure is important okay so uh, regarding on 12th october 2021 uh, contribution of around 16109 crore uh, was collected in atal pension yojana from more than 3.45 crore enrollments have been done okay so in atal pension yojana scheme is being distributed by 250 active atal pension yojana service providers okay so there are more than 250 service providers in the atal pension yojana okay as on september 21 more than 43% subscriber were between 18 years to 25 years okay so here uh, under this uh, 78% subscriber have opted for rupees 1000 per month pension amount and uh, uh, and uh, so like there is a opting uh, ratio like uh, you can opt for rupees 2000 per month 3000 4000 okay per month in 8% while 14% opt for 5000 okay so people opting for 2000 3000 4000 per month pension is 8% people and 14% people belongs to our 5000 per month criteria now the gender gap in enrollment has narrowed down but that is very good that means female are participating in more number so there the gender gap is getting reduced okay so the limit of aggregate holding of equity share by the foreign company so here they are telling that how much equity a foreign company can hold earlier it was 49% now it has increased to 74% in the like a foreign company can hold around 74% of the equity in the insurance sector okay now economic survey highlights of the part 2 so part 1 is over these are the some of the important figures very technical figures were there okay anybody any want anything wanted to ask anything they can tell me anybody wanted to ask anything all fine now 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 we are moving towards the part 2 of that okay so chapter 5 price and inflation so there is a huge increase in the energy food prices input prices freight cost everywhere the right price are rising at a very dramatic rate and even right now uh, we are we are not able to control the rise of prices and even uh, uh, there is a breach of the upper limit of the inflation okay so global inflation very important figure global inflation in the advanced economies inflation has increased 0.7 to around 3.1% in 21 and all the emerging market in developing economies emde okay 
कंज्यूमर प्राइस इंडेक्स इन इंडिया हैज रिमेन इन द रेंज बाउंड टचिंग 5.6 परसेंट इन डिसम्बर बट राइट नाउ द अप्रैल फिगर अप्रैल फिगर इज अराउंड 6.75 परसेंट सो इट हैज ब्रीच द 6 परसेंट लेवल ओके सो प्लीज गो फॉर द लेटेस्ट डेटा then wholesale price index consumer price index combined inflation uh, so here consumer price index uh, combined is also called as headline inflation and what is the core inflation core inflation is calculated when we exclude food and beverages and fuels and lights groups that is called core inflation okay rest all the things we calculate in the rat okay we remove food beverages fuels and light then we calculate the core inflation okay so steps taken by the government to uh, for the supply of essential commodities okay yes 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 it is 6.95 sorry sorry i just uh, mistakenly said okay 6.95 so it is breach of the upper limit right so the pulse and the onion creating a buffer so the target of the pulse pulse's target has been set for 21 22 is 23 million ton remember this figure because whenever they set any target the target is very important okay the target is very important okay so import policies uh, we have to augment like we have to increase the availability of the pulses tur urad dal and also we have kept under the free import category till march 2022 okay so and we have done a very good uh, infrastructure development also and we have done five year mou with various countries with myanmar they will transfer 2.5 lakh million ton of urad 1 lakh million ton of tur and malawi will provide 0.5 lakh million ton of tur okay so myanmar and uh, our malawi and our mozambique you okay so these are all the countries for which we have set a target so please uh, remember all these things because this can be asked because we have especially consider this country for providing the pulses okay now speculation and holding because most of the people uh, do expect uh, uh, speculation and holding they just keep uh, as a buffer amount and then after that uh, uh, all things goes out of control okay so future trading in mustard oil on ncdex has been suspended and the stock limit has been imposed okay so nobody uh, so the mustard oil will not be uh, traded in the ncdex and it has been suspended and a stock limit has been imposed like how much stock you can hold on okay so, uh, soya meal has notified as ordered under essential commodity act okay soya meal okay soya meal has been put under the essential commodity act so this you should remember which uh, things has been added latest in the Uh, essential commodity act okay so that is soya meal up to june 2022 okay then perishable uh, essential commodities like uh, under the perishable operation greens we are running okay that has been launched in 2018 so there has been expanded from tops to tomato onion potato to total 41 perishable commodities we have taken like 41 perishable and 42 production clusters are there so under that operation greens are there and national housing prices national housing bank residex housing housing price index assessment price index based capture the prices of residential housing okay yeah earlier top is tomato onion and potato okay yeah pharmaceutical pricing department of pharmaceuticals they have put a ceiling on 355 medicine and 886 formulation like for 355 medicines there is a ceiling price the prices cannot go above that and there is a formulation 886 formulations are there formulas you cannot just simply do any kind of things okay so they are put under the national list of essential medicines okay and they are a part of schedule one of the drug price control order okay so you should remember that then chapter 6 sustainable development and climate change sustainable development and climate change uh, so in september 2015 what has happened we have started with sustainable development goals 17 goals and 169 targets right so 193 countries have committed for sustainable development goals with the un resolution transforming our world the 2030 agenda for sustainable development so india overall score that niti ayog has created a separate a dashboard and separate index so india has increased his rank from uh, from 60 to 66 
score we have increased earlier we have a 57 of a score then we came to 60 now we are in 66 the score we are having our 60 66 score okay so performance of the states and union territories so front runner are under the score of 65 to 99 okay so and uh, they have been increased to 22 states and all remaining states and union territory were under the performer category that is between 50 to 64 okay Kerala has the highest score of 75 and it is the top ranking among the sustainable development goal India's index okay Kerala uh, you should know this uh, like uh, uh, from uh, like 65 to 99 what category we called then uh, we uh, then the 50 to 64 what category we call okay all these is front runner aspirants okay below 50 we call it as aspirants okay and between 50 to 64 we call it as front runner and from 65 to 99 we call it as front runner and if you have a, have a score of 100 percent that you have achieved it you have achieved it okay you have achieved it okay yeah EFS, if that is there, that is under the unit territory category, okay? So, if you are overall uh, checking it, so unit territory have been given different rankings and uh, states have been given different rankings, okay? So, it is very easy to take control of a union territory because union territory is easy to handle than a state, right? Now, among coastal state, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh are the front runner. So you should remember all these who are front runner, who are aspirants, and all these things. Okay. Now, land forest. Land forest. Russia, Brazil, Canada, USA, China were the top five countries by forest area in 2020. While India was at the 10th largest country by the forest area. Okay. Forest cover in India is 24% of the geographical area and it is accounting for the 2% of the world total forest okay and this 24 we wanted to reach to 33% as you all know that if you have read NCRT books we are looking for 33% of our forest areas okay so India has increased its forest cover significantly okay and uh, here uh, there is nothing much to remember they are just telling like how much forest area has been increased and decreased and all those things nothing much to read over here Okay, adding an average, nothing. Okay, then Madhya Pradesh, yeah, Madhya Pradesh, 11% of the India total forest cover has the largest forest cover in India. Followed by Arunachal Pradesh is having 9%, Chhattisgarh is having 8%, Odisha is having 7% and Maharashtra is having 7%. Top 5 states in terms of highest percentage of forest cover, okay. This is in terms of land area. Okay, here highest percent of forest cover, Mizoram. Out of total Mizoram area, 85% is under forest. Arunachal Pradesh, 79%. Meghalaya, 76%. All the northeastern states. Because in the northeastern states, there is forest and uh, we have mountains and a beautiful place. Okay, beautiful places are there. Okay, so I would expect everybody, once you get selected, go there, enjoy the northeastern states. Okay, now. Top 5 states in terms of very dense forest, 21, it's Arunachal Pradesh is having a very dense forest accounting for 21% of the very dense forest area. Okay, then Maharashtra, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. Then about the reservoirs, reservoirs like dams and all these places, we are monitoring 138 reservoirs in India. Okay, 138 reservoirs, live storage we are checking. Okay, then rivers. Ganga river basin is the largest river basin in our country covering more than quarter of the country's land okay so it is hosting around 43% of the population Ganga river basin is giving water to 43% of the population of our country and is contributing 28% of the Indian water resources so Ganga river basin basin means Ganga river plus its tributaries okay Uh, sometimes you require because if you are moving into any places where uh, uh, there are tribal areas okay tribal areas and since China is also claiming the Arunachal Pradesh and uh, yes sometimes it requires uh, a special permission but I think it's only for few places 
but i would just expect you should go to meghalaya you would go to assam okay right now you should uh, not go to tripura and all these places because right now uh, some insurgency problems are going on but it is slightly going down uh, so once it gets properly settled out so you can enjoy those places also okay so i would expect everybody should go to meghalaya meghalaya okay and assam go to kaziranga national park okay and go to your uh, what is that uh, the name of the island uh, that is the uh, riverine islands anybody tell me the name of the uh, riverine islands of the assam it is the largest riverine island of the world majoli 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 is the biggest riverine islands in the world okay it has been created by the river okay so go there enjoy the place okay now namami gange mission namami gande mission aims to protect conserve and rejuvenate the ganga river basin okay so for a period of 2015 to 2020 around a budget of 20000 crore has been settled for that okay so what are the things that has to be taken under that nirmal ga nirmal ganga that is unpolluted flow aviral flow continuous flow जन गंगा पीपल रिवर कॉन्टेक्ट एंड ज्ञान गंगा रिसर्च एंड नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट ओके सो एज पर डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी वन अ टोटल ऑफ थ्री सिक्सटी थ्री प्रोजेक्ट वर्थ रुपीज थर्टी थाउजेंड एट फोर्टी वन करोड़ हैज बीन स्पेंड ओके so in addition clean ganga fund has also been established in 2014 the main objective is for national effort of improving and cleanliness of the river ganga okay so around in 31st december 21 there is a total of 561 crore that has been received under the clean ganga fund okay then under nirmal ganga that is unpolluted flow component of the mission 160 sewerage projects have been sanctioned at a cost of Twenty four thousand five sixty eight crore till December. Then now regarding air pollution, air pollution is one of the biggest global environmental issues, and India has launched national clean air program. Okay, we wanted to achieve twenty to thirty percent reduction in particulate matter. This is very important. This can be asked in examination. Okay, figure very important. How much reduction in particulate matter we are looking for? Okay. okay now uh concentration by 2024 across the country keeping 2017 as a base year so we keep 2017 as a base year and based on 2017 we have to reduce the particulate matter by 2030 by 2024 okay then india has launched a national action plan on climate change napcc okay so we have a eight uh, uh, eight plans under that so please do remember all the eight national plans okay One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have already developed in two thousand eight. Okay. Then right now our Glasgow summit has happened. COP twenty six. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has went uh, under the presidency of UK. So it has happened in the Scotland, uh, Glasgow, and happens from thirty first October to thirty November. The main pact is adapting mitigation, finance, technology, and all those things. Okay. So the main decision uh, urged the developed countries to give US dollar hundred billion. till 2025 so because since in paris climate summit in paris climate summit it has been asked that developed countries will give us dollar 100 billion every year okay but it has not been started till now so again that has been emphasized on okay so cop 2026 also welcome the launch of comprehensive two year glasgow sharm a sheik work program so please remember that this is a new thing that has been here it is a two year program it is a two year program so that has been started in the glasgow okay now dealing with financial risk associated with climate change okay obviously if you wanted to mitigate or if you wanted to adapt to the climate change money is required everywhere everything you wanted to do money is required okay so in may 21 reserve bank of india has set up a new unit that is called sustainable finance group sfg okay to effectively counter this risk and for lend, uh, for lending and regulatory initiative okay then augmenting finance for sustainable development so task force on sustainable finance has been developed under the set up under the economic uh, department of economic affairs ministry of finance okay under ministry of finance it has been developed and rbi joined the central bank and supervision network for greening and financial system ngfs and there is a liberalized external commercial borrowing 
for renewable uh, energy projects okay then inventing in resilience for sustainable development so uh, business responsibility report for the top 100 listed entity has been made okay so sebi has been one of the early adopter of sustainability reporting for the listed entities like uh, sebi will look on like uh, which kind of which company is uh, properly following all the sustainable things and all in 2021 sebi has issued a new sustainability reportment requirement as per the business responsibility and sustainability report which shall replace the existing brr okay so this will be replaced by brsr okay now uh yeah india initiative what india has taken the initiative india has in taken an initiative of one world movement in the context of climate that is called life lifestyle for environment at the cop 26 india has created international solar alliance okay the honorable prime minister has joined the green grid initiative one sun one world one grid g g i o s o w o g ISA has also got a permanent observer stated in the United Nations General Assembly. Okay. Then coalition for disaster resilience infrastructure. So Prime Minister of India, UK, Italy and Fiji has launched this. Who has launched this? So under this you can get a odd one out question. Odd one out. They will give you who has launched international conference on disaster resilient infrastructure. Options are India, UK, Italy, Fiji, Canada. So odd one out will be Canada. Okay. So Honorable Prime Minister India, UK, Australia, Fiji, Jamaica and Mauritius has launched IRIS. Okay. And lead IT was launched by the India and Sweden. Please remember this India and Sweden. Okay. So here three question potential question you have. <laughs> three potential question you have from here. Regarding ICDRI, regarding IRIS, regarding LED IT. Okay. So you should know under which country this agreement has been signed. Okay. Now, chapter 7 on agriculture and food management. Very important. Okay. So agriculture and allied sector is the largest employer of the workforce. Accounting for sizable 18.8% on the gross value addition. Okay. And that has witnessed a growth of 3.6%. Only this agriculture sector has shown a growth of 3.6% uh, in 2020 and 3.9% uh, in 2021 during the COVID times. Okay. Then gross value addition. The share of the se uh, sector of the total gross value addition has a long term trend of 18%. The share of agriculture and allied sector in total gross value addition, however, improved to 20.2% from 18.2%. Now, investment in agriculture and allied sector. So there is a gross capital formation and uh, higher access to concessional institutional credit for farmer and greater participation of private sector. They are the, the investment is very less right now two to three percent in the agriculture we wanted them to increase it so no question we can expect from here nothing can be expected okay then yes now come the fourth advance estimate of 2020 and 21 total food grain production in the country is estimated at a record of 308 million tons okay for 2020 and 21 okay which is 11.15 million ton higher okay important for the advances the production of rice wheat oats cereal has increased at compounded annual growth rate so this is the increase in the growth rate of the rice wheat and oats cereals okay so this figures are very important 308.65 million ton very important figure okay now agriculture production as per the first advance estimate for kharif only Total food grain production is estimated for a record of 150.5 million tons. Okay. And regarding the edible oils, the oil seed production has grown to almost 43% more from 2015 to 2020. Okay. So there is an increase of 43% in uh, six years. Okay. Now, as per OECD FAO report, agriculture outlook report of 21 and 2030, India is projected to maintain a higher per capita vegetable oil consumption 
ओके सो दैट विल रीच टू फोर्टीन के जी पर कैपिटा बाई ट्वेंटी थ्री थर्टी ओके सो इंडिया विल इंडिया पर कैपिटा ऑयल कंजम्पन विल बी फोर्टीन के जी पर कैपिटा ओके देन शुगर सेक्टर शुगर सेक्टर सेवेंटी लैख मिलियन टन शुगर हैज बीन एक्सपोर्टेड इन शुगर सीजन इन कंपेरिजन टू फिफ्टी नाइन सो देर इज अ गुड इंक्रीज ओके सो यू शड जस्ट ने नो दैट हाउ मच हैज बीन एक्सपोर्टेड इन ऑल दो थिंग्स देन मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस एम एस पीस देर आर ट्वेंटी टू मैंडेटेड एग्रीकल्चर क्रॉप्स ओके फॉर विच एम एस पी हैज टू बी डिसाइडेड ओके एंड यू शुड ऑल्सो नो हु रिलीज दिस रिकमेंडेशन सी ए पी सी सी एस सी पी सॉरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दिस क्वेश्चन इज आस्ड एवरीवेयर ओके नॉर्मली पीपल से दैट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर नो इट इज रिकमेंडेशन हैज बीन गिवन बाई कमीशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर कॉस्ट एंड प्राइसेस सी ए सी पी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू शुड रिमेंबर दिस ओके टोटल फोर्टीन खरीफ क्रॉप्स आर देयर एंड सिक्स रबी क्रॉप्स आर देयर एंड टू कमर्शियल क्रॉप्स आर देयर ओके सो यू शुड नो विच ऑल थिंग्स आर देयर okay so the highest increase in the msp has been recommended for lentils okay the highest recommendation has been msp increase has to be given to lentils that is masoor dal rape seed and mustard at 400 rupees per quintal okay then after that crop diversification so there is a amount of 120 crore please remember this for crop diversification 120 crore rupees has been remi- rebu- uh, uh, released by central government central share okay under the cdp uh, original green revolution and 10 crore of the cdp for replacing the tobacco farming okay now agriculture credit now we are going to discuss about the agriculture credit okay now the agriculture credit flow for the year was 2020 was this much 15 lakh 75000 crore please remember this for 2020 and 21 15 lakh crore 75398 crore agriculture credit flow has happened the target was 15 lakh crore but it has extra 17000 uh, 75000 crore that has happened okay now for 21 and 22 the target has been fixed as 16 lakh 50000 crore please remember all these target okay and till now till september 2021 we have reached to a sum of 7 lakh 36000 crore okay and government is also announcing 2 lakh crore of concessional credit that means till 2 lakh crore people will get loan at a reduced interest rate for 2.5 crore farmers who are having kisan credit cards okay uh, i'll i'll just answer the question at the last okay ravi just please wait it okay hello mohit then situation assessment survey then situation assessment survey is there nsso in its 77th report that is conducted from 19 uh, 1st january to 31st december 19 survey on land livestock situational assessment agriculture household and all those things the situational assessment survey 21 reveals that average average monthly income per agriculture household is 10218 crore uh, sorry 2 uh, sorry 10218 rupees per month okay in 2014 it was 6426 per month rupees okay so the net receipt from the crop production alone has increased 22.6% so there is an increase in the monthly income of the agriculture household okay so this if they have given the figure so please remember that okay and this figure you can also utilize in your descriptive answer because i am expecting that everybody will be clearing of the phase 1 examination okay then natural farming okay under the scheme of our uh, bk uh, bpkp financial assistance of rupees 12200 per hectare for 3 years has been provided okay for cluster formation capacity building and continuous hand holding okay then allied sector livestock sectors are there so they have also shown a type of improvement but uh, nothing much uh, and uh, uh, nothing much uh, to remember from here okay then uh, dairy sector yeah dairy sector dairy is the single largest agriculture commodity contributing 5% of the national economy 
एंड एम्प्लॉइंग मोर देन एट करोड़ फैमिलीज ओके वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिया इज रैंक फर्स्ट इन द मिल्क प्रोडक्शन एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल मिल्क प्रोडक्शन ओके सो मिल्क प्रोडक्शन इन द कंट्री हैज ग्रोन एट अ कंपाउंडेड एनुअल ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ सिक्स पॉइंट टू परसेंट एंड राइट नाउ इट हैज बीन रीच टू टू हंड्रेड नाइन पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स मिलियन टन एंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड ट्वेंटी एंड ट्वेंटी वन ओके नाउ चैप्टर सेवन एग्रीकल्चर एंड फूड मैनेजमेंट एग्ज एंड मीट्स According to FAO Stats Production Data, India has ranked third in the egg production, eighth in the meat production in the world. Eighth in the meat production in the world. Now, what are the initiative has been taken? First of all, National Animal Disease Control Program has been uh, taken in order to make sure that we wanted to eradicate foot and mouth diseases and brucellosis by 2030 then animal husbandry infrastructure development fund ahidf has been there so it has a fund of rupees 15000 crore very important you should remember that that has been launched in 2020 please remember the quantity that fund is having so the amount of interest subvention released under the scheme is 12.74 crore and 6.40 crore till 17th january 2022 okay then fishery sector again the second india is the second largest fish production country around 7.56% of the global fish production that is india is happening and export earning we are getting is from 46662 crore okay and government has launched a very important scheme of 20050 crore that is called pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana as a part of atmanirbhar bharat package okay now FDI in food processing sector. So there is a hundred percent FDI in food processing sectors. So sector has witnessed an FDI inflow of around four point nine nine billion dollars. Okay. Then Pradhan Mantri formalization of micro uh, micro food processing enterprises F uh, PM FME. Okay. Under uh, uh, A and B mission, Atm Nirbhar Bharat Yojana. Uh, Uh, the uh, the centrally sponsored scheme a uh, total outlay of 10000 crore has been set up for a period of 5 year 2020 to 25 please remember all the targets under the pradhan mantri formalization of micro uh, food processing uh, unit all the targets has been there okay so under the uh, pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana these are five things uh, seven eight things are there okay so mega food park cold chain storage infrastructure agro processing backward and forward linkages expansion operation greens food testing laboratories all these things are there okay now top scheme to, uh, tomato onion potato then food management fortification of rice year 2122 government has allocated 1052 crore lakh tons of food grain to state and union territories under the national food security act and under the integ integrated management of public distribution system one nation one ration card onorc one nation one ration card system has been launched okay food subsidies very important the economic cost of wheat has increased from 1908 per quintal to 2993 per quintal okay similarly the economic cost of rice has also risen from uh, one quintal right, right now it is 4293 per quintal then ethanol blending very important this normally this question is always asked okay a uh, government has set a target like how much ethanol blending you have to do with the petrol like mixing uh, petrol with the ethanol okay so now government has now set 20% ethanol blending target for mixing ethanol with petrol okay that has to be achieved by 2025 okay May, uh, mainly you get ethanol from uh, uh sugar okay sugar cane and all those things okay during the uh, uh, during the processing of the sugar okay then storages where all the storages are there maximum so we have a total fci storage and the state agency storage at 961.733 lakh million tons so this much storage capacity we have okay in india okay then industry and infrastructure industry and infrastructure so during the first half of 2122 was 29.9% increase uh, okay so the gross value addition at constant prices have grew by 4.4 4.53% so nothing must to remember over here now sector wise growth uh, manufacturing fell to 14.4% and now it is expected that it is going to improve by 15.3% in 21 and 22 22 okay 
so there are eight code uh, eight core industries are there you should know what are the eight core industries first is coal second is crude oil third is natural gas fourth is refinery fifth is fertilizer sixth is steel seventh is cement eighth is electricity so these are eight core industries okay and they constitute 40.27 percentage of the industrial index of production iip okay 40.27 so a uh, increase in the uses of any of these things will show that there is a increase in the growth of the economy okay now okay uh, fine so here the performance of the central public sector enterprises there were 58 listed central public sector enterprises on 31st uh, uh, march 2020 they have a market capitalization of 8.2 lakh crore okay then uh, micro small and medium enterprises so micro small medium enterprises cluster development program prime minister employment generation and schemes of fund for regeneration of traditional uh, industries furti all these schemes are there for enabling the it systems champions portal name you should know you everybody know this is important champions portal this is a it based technology system okay so a network of control room has been set up like a hub and spoke model okay hub and spoke like uh, this will be hub and this will be like a spokes okay So from here, central data will be there to every place. It will be transferred. So uh, New Delhi, where third sixty nine sixty eight spokes are located across the country. Okay. Now uh, textile sector. Textile sector is the second largest employment generator in our country, next only to agriculture. Agriculture is the largest uh, employment generator, and after that, textile. Okay. So. after that uh, production link initiative has been uh, given to the man made fiber and all these things so government is providing too much support to the uh, our textile sector okay then so, uh, we have a government notify the settings up to 7 pm mega uh, integrated textile region and april park mitra mitra okay 7 pm prime minister mega integrated textile region and uh, april park a total outlay of 4445 crore for that okay now electronic industries for that we have created a policy that is called national policy on electronics okay so to position india to be as a global electronics hub okay right now as you all know that why we are facing because we have a shortage of semi conductors which are used in various electric vehicles and all those things okay so we have a shortage of electrical uh, uh, semiconductors so which we normally uh, import from china and all these places so we are dependent on those countries so that is why we have created a new policy national policy on electronics and we wanted to make india a electronics hub okay then parak parak a unified laboratory network recognizing that testing and certification are crucial for enhancing the competitiveness of indian goods and services that is called parak okay so you should know about the parak also now infrastructure sector under the infrastructure national infrastructure pipeline has come up okay so the government has launched the viability gap funding under that scheme so under the viability gap funding uh, amount uh, from 2014 to 15 to 2021 da uh, is rupees 2943 crore we have to achieve dollar 5 trillion economy by 24 and 25 so india needs around 1.4 trillion dollar in investment in infrastructure only okay so we need india invested about us dollar 1.1 trillion on infrastructure from 2008 to 17 but if you wanted to make country like in 3 to 4 years 5 trillion dollar economy so we need that 5 3 we need 1.4 trillion dollar within these 3 4 years okay now national monetization pipeline okay uh, in consultation like uh, we have to monetize our various assets okay so total indicative value of national monetization plan has been estimated to 6 lakh crore rupees over a period of 4 years okay then uh, road transport urban road and project roads are there okay various road transport are there there is a increase in the road construction okay so the extent of road construction per day uh, uh, sub uh, has increased substantially in 2020 to 21 around 36.5 km per day earlier it was 28 km 
now it is 36.5 km per day the highways are getting constructed then railway railway has also seen a very huge improvement okay so around an average one one eight three five track kilometer is been launching per year indian railway is also also adopting a indigenous technology such as kavach okay and vande bharat train and uh, right now indian railway has operated one eight four one kisan uh, so kisan railway services uh, with approximately six point zero uh, lakh tons of the goods now civil aviation under civil aviation the domestic traffic has doubled okay right now the domestic traffic of 2019 and 20 data is 137 million people and regarding the ports we have 13 major ports which carry around 871 million tons of goods okay then telecom sector 45% of the subscriber were based in the rural india and 55% people are here in the rural areas okay a total of once 1.733 1.73 lakh gram panchayats are connected by over, uh, optical fiber cable and 1.59 uh, lakh gram panchayat are service ready on optical fiber cable okay now petroleum crude and natural gas india depends on import of more than 80% of its requirement okay natural gas production was 28.67 billion tons a uh, billion cubic meters and uh, in 2021 then what about the electricity the total installed power capacity and captive power plant was 459.1 gigawatt as compared to 446 gigawatt, gigawatt on so there is an increase in the like around 2.87 increase in the installed capacity of electricity okay now uh, renewable energy solar wind biomass and small hydro energy renewable energy excluding the large hydro has constituted 24.71% increase increase uh, like uh, there is a installed capacity like if we have a 100% uh, electricity out of that 24.71% is coming from the renewable energy okay so as of 31st october 21 india total renewable energy installed capacity uh is around 103.05 gigawatts okay now chapter 9 is on services the service sector has grew by 10.8% uh nothing much so uh, during the first half of 21 22 the service sector has received over us dollar 16.7 billion uh of fdi from outside and uh, chandigarh stands with a particular high share of services okay chandigarh stands out with a particular high share of services at 74% while sikkim share remains the lower okay the total cargo capacity of the ports has increased to 1246 million tons so right now the indian total cargo capacity is 1246.86 million ton please underline that or remember that okay now after that uh, sagar mala project around to uh, to uh, 802 projects worth rupees 5.53 lakh crore under the sagar mala projects are been working regarding the startups government has recognized over 14000 new startups okay earlier there were only 730 startups in 1617 and right now till 21 we have 14000 new startups have come most of the startup have been came during the covid time only okay so as a result more than 61400 startup have been recognized till now delhi has replaced bangalore as a startup capital okay so right now delhi is the startup capital of india okay earlier bangalore was the startup capital okay just one minute let me have some water guys okay so around after that 11300 state startup maharashtra has the highest number of recognized startups okay so as on january 14 2022 83 unicorns unicorns mean unicorns mean that any companies whose valuation is above 1 billion dollar okay and regarding the patent 
so india's patent filing has gone up from 39000 to 45000 in 2016 now it is 58000 in 21 okay so there is a huge increase in the patent filing that means india is working very hard on the research and development okay so consequently india ranking in the global innovation index has climbed to 35 ranks from 81st in 2015 okay to 46 so right now india is on the 35th position okay okay now now comes our chapter number 10 so it is regarding social infrastructure and employment everything regarding education health and all those thing so first of all covid 19 vaccination strategy so you can think that this is the last chapter or the last part of the lecture okay so uh, we have a india's first domestic vaccine prol viron inactivated corona virus vaccine that is covaxin okay so this is a full fax full form okay covaxin was developed by bharat biotech so remember who has developed the covaxin okay international limited in collaboration uh, with the national institute of virology of indian council of medical research i am i icmr has funded the clinical uh, uh, clinical trial of covid shield vaccine okay and that has been developed in collaboration with oxford and astrazeneca okay so union budget of 21 and 22 has allocated rupees 35000 crore for this purpose so arogya setu app has been launched to enable people to access themselves uh, the risk of their catching and they will just enable the people to access themselves then covin even a unique digital platform to support the real time vaccination activities to look on that okay then some initiative that has been taken drdo has developed the spo2 that is oxygen cylinder controller spocc very important who has developed okay so spocc is developed is based on the medical oxygen cylinder to optimally use available medical oxygen for covid uh, patient okay so the the anti covid 19 therapeutic application of the drug that is 2 deoxy d glucose 2 dg 2 dg if these are the words which are normally asked in the examination okay so in collaboration with dr reddy laboratories in hyderabad was formulated okay then what about the uh, trends in the social sector so government has remarked uh, aggregate rupees 71.61 lakh crore in the social service sector there is an increase of 9.8% mainly national health mission ayushman bharat health infrastructure mission so central sponsored scheme with an outlay of rupees 64180 crore rupees in the next few years they have to inform okay so the national health policy says that india has to ex- do the expenditure of 2.5% of the gdp by 2025 if they really wanted to have a proper infrastructure facility regarding the health okay so education uh, in the education sector we have a under jal jeevan mission around 8 lakh 39000 schools have been provided with water tap regarding the people teacher ratio that has also been increased in a pro- uh, that has been uh, improved okay in the primary upper primary and higher secondary regarding the school enrollment 26.45 crore children were enrolled in the schools very good number okay so then school dropout rate has also been declined and acer report if somebody ask you is acer report is related to what normally acer report is related to the status of education okay is acer report is always related to the status of education okay then uh, pradhan mantri poshan shakti uh, nirman pm poshan scheme is there uh, that is the scheme earlier known as mid day meal scheme cover all school children in balwatika just before class 1 and class 1 to 8 in government and government aided school okay so the gross enrollment ratio in the higher education has recorded a growth okay then national apprenticeship training schools schemes nats has been extended for next 5 year and they have been provided with the outlay of rupees 3054 crore so this scheme and target and how many people they wanted to train under that you should know that okay then epg patshala okay it is the massive open online courses are there you can go in internet and you can search various courses over there okay then we have a unnat bharat abhiyan has been launched to cater to the rural uh, local needs okay then uh, pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana very important you should know each and every detail regarding that then jan shiksha sansthan okay jan shiksha sansthan scheme okay 
they aim to provide vocational skills to the non illiterate people neo literate people person okay so who have means left the education and who have a level of education up to 8th and school dropouts up to 12th standards in the age group of 15 to 45 okay so this is for those people then atmanirbhar skilled employee employee mapping asim portal there is an asim portal is there they have a 1.38 registered candidate over there then pradhan mantri dakshita aur kusthala sampann hitagri yojana pm daksh yojana okay under that skilling of marginalized people is there scheduled caste especially scheduled caste people backward classes and safai karmachari 50000 people have been selected under that okay now uh demand for manrega has been increased to 4.59 lakh crore people the manrega budget has been increased from 61000 to 75000 crore so allocation for financial year has been enhanced to 98000 crore till now okay then pradhan mantri shram yogi manadhan yojana is a voluntary contribution pension scheme for providing minimum monthly pension of rupees 3000 for after you attain a age of 60 years okay then health normally ayushman bharat and health and wellness center government wants to increase huge amount of health and wellness center and please make sure that there is a latest survey of national family health survey uh, the latest report is of the national health survey fifth okay so health status child health indicators are there poshan abhiyan is there so health indicators are very important under 5 mortality rate has declined okay so earlier it is 49.7 now it is 41.9 then infant mortality rate has declined now earlier it is uh, 40.7 and now it is 35.2 stunting has declined from 38 to 36 wasting has been declined from 21 to 19 underweight has declined from 36 to 20, 32 so all the parameters are showing that we are moving in a progress we are progressing in all these places okay then life expectancy the life expectancy at birth is 69.4 total fertility rate is has further came down to 2 okay so now uh, we have uh, reached to a replacement level okay replacement level is a level like uh, during the time when old people die and new people take uh, take the places of these people okay so we have a proper replacement level normally the replacement level is 2.1 okay then sex ratio sex ratio uh, number of female per 1000 male the total population has rise from 991 female in 2015 to 1020 in 2019 as per national family health survey so good increase very good increase okay so more importantly sex ratio at birth female children per 1000 male child born in the last 5 year has grown from 919 to 929 okay so then uh, drinking water and sanitation so we will be providing all household with a tap connection by 2024 okay and uh, pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin is working pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana all weather road is going on so you should know like how much money is has been given in the recent budget for all these pradhan mantri awas yojana pradhan mantri gramir yojana the money like how much money has been allocated to this sector recently okay then the last chapter that is tracking the development through satellites okay this is the last chapter and this is the only one slide okay so the last chapter has been added to this uh, economic survey is that ki whatever what whatever we are doing like wherever we are constructing anything where we are adding the green lights uh, lights are uh, like solar lights grid connection everything so we are tracking it by satellites and cartography okay so an important theme to this economic survey is the use of new form of data and information for tracking economic activities and development geospatial maps 
will let you to visualize the data and it will also help you to better understand the trends okay night time luminosity okay when you see during the night time like okay there is a increase in the lighting earlier that place was a dark right now night there is a lighting in that area that means yes the power connections are there okay so this is the way we are right now looking okay so right light night time luminosity provides an interesting representation of the expansion of electricity supply geospatial distribution population and economic activity urban expansion as well as growth of ribbon development between the urban hubs okay so guys uh, this is the last slide we have done today so if please please go for the mock test very important we are running the courses on mock test okay we have very concise material if you are a new joinee to preparation please do join our courses we will be providing you all the help whatever you wanted uh, for your exam preparation and we will uh, leave no stone unturned for your success so but uh, right now it is a high time and you should better go for uh, mock test writing of the mock test because this will gauge you your performance then like how uh, how much time you are taking in writing the exam paper so that you do not get surprised when you write the real examination right so please uh, be there and uh, tomorrow we will be doing some more type uh, some uh, uh, schemes and government schemes state government schemes and all those things we will be discussing okay anybody wanted to ask anything Ravi Shankar, the economic survey this year has been prepared under the guidance of principal economic advisor. Okay, principal economic advisor. In the first slide we have mentioned, right? In the first slide we have mentioned, see here. Yeah, this document, uh, uh, it is prepared under the guidance of earlier chief economic advisor, okay. But uh, the problem happens is that uh, the time of that person has got uh, over. So this year it has been prepared by the principal economic advisor, okay. It has been prepared by the principal economic advisor, fine. So guys, anything you wanted to know till now or uh, I'll just wind up the session. Okay, guys, thank you so much. It's really great to see you all. Tomorrow again, I will be meeting you 9 p.m. And we will be just revising all the things all together. Okay, uh, till then, uh, please let me know if you have any doubts uh, tomorrow.